All right, for this pro tip, I want to talk about slightly more advanced sorting rules, specifically how to apply multi-level row and column sorting. So for very simple cases, you can just use the column header options to sort individual fields one by one. It's a perfectly valid approach. But in cases where you want something a bit more complex, a bit more custom, you can use the actual sort tool within your data tab. And when you access that tool, you'll see a dialog box that allows for multi-level sorting. And essentially what you're doing here is creating an ordered list of sort rules that can accommodate multiple columns in your table. So in the example we're looking at here, what we're doing is sorting by a country field alphabetically from A to Z, and then within each of those countries, we're sorting on the provinces within those countries, also from A to Z, and then within each province, we're sorting by a numerical field called points, largest to smallest. So now our table is being sorted based on logic from three columns at once, as opposed to one at a time. And I'm going to show you a great example of what this actually looks like in just a second. But this is kind of our default option. It's our sort top to bottom. It's how most people sort. You're basically just sorting rows within each column. But that's not the only way to sort in Excel. In fact, if you select the entire columns of your range, including the headers, you'll see another option, which is to sort left to right. And this basically allows you to sort the order of your columns instead of rows. And one thing in this example that you'll notice is that we're sorting by row one, which is the first row in our table. It's our header row in most cases. And we're not sorting on values or text. We're not sorting alphabetically or large to small or small to large. We're sorting on cell color which is really interesting. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around at first, but basically you've got other options besides cell values. You can sort based on color, font color, even icon sets that come from conditional formatting rules. And basically what Excel will do is it's going to look at row one, see all of the cell color fills that exist in that row and give you options to say, Hey, I want to put all of my cells filled with green, to the left or move them all the way to the right or vice versa. It just gives you a bit more flexibility, you know, when those alphabetical or numerical sorting rules don't get the job done. So a little bit tricky to comprehend at first, but I'm going to show you an example of when this could be a really helpful tool. Now, common use cases uh, for one, applying more complex or custom rules to your tables or ranges. Number two, rearranging your columns either alphabetically or by different rules like color or font uh, to organize large tables, especially tables that may have dozens or even hundreds of columns where cutting and pasting may not be the most efficient approach. So with that, let's jump into Excel. I'm going to show you some great demos of what this actually looks like. All right, so here I am, Excel Pro Tips Workbook. I'm in the Table of Contents tab, and we're getting towards the end of our productivity tip list. And let's look at our row and column sorting demo. This is a three star demo, so a little bit trickier, but still you know, pretty easy to comprehend. And let's go ahead and click link to jump straight to that row and column sorting tab. Now here you're gonna see all sorts of data about wines. And each row in this range represents an individual wine. And then we've got information attributes about that wine, the variety, what winery it came from, the province, the country of origin, as well as some quantitative or numerical fields like the point rating up to 100 and the price per bottle. So a really good table to practice some of these row and column sorting tools. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and add a filter to row one. A couple ways you can do this. You can jump to the data tab, simply press filter. Um, I prefer the alt key tip approach. It's a bit faster. Alt A T will do the exact same thing. And again, if we wanted some very simple, straightforward sorting logic here, like sorting all of our rows based on countries, we can use those headers to do that. So now we'll see, you know, Argentina, Australia, Austria at the top of column C. We can apply a similar rule to province, for instance, alphabetically A to Z. And we'll see uh, <laughs> Alentejano, um, Alentejo, Alsace. Um, Basically, our provinces are now sorted, but take a look at column C, the country field. 
Uh, that one's kind of been overwritten. It's resorted based on the order of provinces. So it's kind of like a one and done kind of situation if you use these column headers uh, to sort your table. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more complex here. Let's go into data sort. And this is where we can access that multi-level uh, logic here. So in this case, let's use a similar example uh, that I talked about in the slide where we're using some of these geographic fields. And let's start high level with the country first. And let's sort the country on values A to Z. It doesn't really sen make sense. We don't have cell colors or formatting here uh, that we could use. So cell values is really the only option that really works in this case. And now again, within each country, so we're going to have a chunk of rows for each country. Within that chunk of rows, how do we want to sort that chunk? That's why we add a level and we can sort those chunks you know, by province, also A to Z. And then within each province, we could go even deeper and sort you know, the wineries or the wine varieties. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and add a level and use one of our numerical fields. This time, instead of looking at you know, the most or least expensive wines, let's rank each province by the highest point rating. So we can go ahead and pick the points column here, cell values, and we don't want smallest to largest. We want largest to smallest. Since we're sorting top to bottom, I want to see the highest values up top. Press OK. And there you go. Instantly, it's applied these multiple levels or layers of sorting rules. We've got our countries sorted first. And then note that within each country, our provinces are also sorted alphabetically. So Austria, got your A's, your B's, your C's, your K's. And then within each of these provinces, your point ratings are sorted. Whoops, looks like I sorted on price accidentally. Our prices are sorted alphabetically. And that's fine if we wanted to change that. Uh, whoops, we can simply go back to our sorting rules, change price to points. That looks better. I was, I was wondering what was going on there. Um, so now within each province here, we see the points descending. 92, 91, 90, 87, and so on. So we've created a much more uh, sophisticated set of sorting logic here that we couldn't have achieved with just those headers alone. Um, so that's row sorting, and that's kind of where 99% of people will stop. But remember that you can also apply column specific sorting as well. So what if we wanted to take these seven columns and rearrange the order of them, you know, without just cutting and pasting them manually. So for instance, you know, maybe I want my metrics over here on the right, maybe I want my columns to be sorted alphabetically left to right. Um, these are all options that I can accomplish or achieve using that sort tool. So the key here is to actually, instead of just you know selecting any cell within the range, I'm going to select the entire column A by clicking the header. I'm going to hold shift, press column G to make sure that I've got the entire set of columns. And now when I go into my sort options, you'll see the dialog box looks a little bit different. Now it says row here instead of column. And it says sort by row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Now you will almost always want to choose your header row here, which in this case is row one. So that looks good. And if I press options, you'll see that now we're no longer sorting top to bottom because we're not sorting rows. We're sorting left to right because we're sorting columns. So press OK. We've got the same set of options here. Values, cell color, font color, or conditional formatting icons. Again, because we only have a single cell fill color here, the only option that makes sense right now is cell values. So sorting row one values A to Z will accomplish something like this, where our column headers are now alphabetically. Country, which begins with C, points, price, province, wine name, wine variety, and winery. So we've rearranged our seven columns into alphabetical order. And that's fine, but it's not quite what I want. In fact, what I really want is to put my two numerical fields at the end of the list. So I can't accomplish that using any sort of uh, value or text-based rule because points and price is always going to fall kind of in the middle of an alphabetical sort order. And this is where something like sorting by color is a great tool. So all I need to do is select those two column headers that I want 
uh, to reposition or move, go into my home menu and give them a different kind of cell fill. Um, so let's give them a green fill here instead. And again, select all of column A through all of column G holding shift. I'm gonna go back into data, back into sort. Now, instead of sorting on cell values, I'm gonna sort on cell color. And take a look at this. It knows now that I've added a second fill color with this green. I'm gonna say, give me all those green cells in row one and put them on the right. Press okay. And there you go. Now it's put my two quantitative values in columns F and G and the rest of my columns uh, are sorted like they originally were. So really helpful options to use if you want more complex or more custom uh, sorting criteria.